Good evening. I'm Theodore Belukas for Vernissage TV here in New York, and we're at the Editions Artist Book Fair, which is a benefit for PS1 Radio, and we're with Eric Singer from Lemur, uh, which was, uh, I guess, a commission to do a kind of atmospheric piece for, for the fair. And well, you, we, we were we were asked to bring our stuff and uh, and and do a, an installation for the entrance. Okay. And you 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 make or you create robotic musical instruments? Yes, uh, we create ro robotic musical instruments and also other kinds of electronic musical instruments that humans play, which we call our not bots. So we have one bot here and a whole bunch of not bots. Not bots. Yes. Okay. The Notbots are also called the Trons. So we have the Slinkatron, the Slimatron, the Chimatron. But this like is that. also musical instruments as sculpture as well, right? Yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah, they're they they're they're like installation pieces. Yes, they are. They are. What, what, what's behind us that we're listening? Uh, that that's a Slinkatron playing itself, or or it's it's swaying in the wind and being played, and uh, it's a musical Slinky, and it's we have it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's very sensitive. Oh, so you control it by, by playing with the slinky. Yeah, it's, it controls the playback speed of, of the musical loop. I mean, it really can do anything we program it to do, but that's what it's doing in this case. How did you get started with this? Uh, I don't my weird mind. Um, I, I'm, I, I've got a background in engineering and a background in music and at some point they collided and I started doing electronic music. Okay. And uh, I did these kinds of instruments, you know, weird playable instruments by, you know, instruments played by humans for a while. And the, then I sort of thought, well, what's the opposite of that? And it's, an, it's like instead of humans playing synthetic sounds into a computer, it's a computer playing real sounds coming out, and that led to the idea of musical robots. Is, conceivably, could you um, or would you uh, put on a concert? We do that all the time. Uh, we collaborate with a lot of different composers and musicians. And uh, earlier this year, we put on our biggest concert called uh, Robosonic Eclectic. We're going to do this every year, commissioning several people to create pieces for the robots. Uh, this year on the concert, we're two computer music pioneers, Mort Sabotnik and George Lewis, also Jim Thorwell of Fetus fame, and they might be giants. Oh, really? Yeah. I know. I noticed that there seems to be a burgeoning electronic music arts scene in New York. Some, there's a, some kind of a mailing list, and uh, I mean, there, it's... Well, I mean, it's, it's always been a center of electronic music. The, there's a scene going on now that's burgeoning that's like a DIY thing, where people are doing a lot more of making their own instruments, making their own sounds, uh, hacking, uh, circuit bending, um, using microcontrollers. And in fact, Lemur is not only an art group, we also have a space where we teach the art of making electronic art. Mm -hmm. We get hired to do installations at museums, galleries, uh, often children's museums, science museums. Because it's uh, so interactive, right? Right, yeah. right. Uh, and we also, uh, we seek out people and commission them to come in and create works with the robots. Okay, so this is the Slimatron, and uh, this is conductive slime that we've made, and uh, there are nails in this box that are hooked up to sensors and sense the movement of the slime. Let me reach under and turn up the volume. While he's doing that, I want to play with it. This is very it's tactile and also very sort of cathartic at the same time. It's wonderful. And you're DJing now. Yeah. Yeah. I get. Yeah. Really. I, I'm scratching. Look at that. Yeah. DJ Theo. You figured it out. Uh, this I kind of considered more of an installation piece. Uh, and you would just see the slime slowly drip down, but we're going to speed it up a little bit. Uh, as the slime connects the nails, it starts talking and it, and it turns on these voices uh, speaking 
various texts that I've entered into the computer, and it's anything from political speeches to song lyrics to music. And one could record his own text, right? Sure, of course. Yeah. And it's not even recorded, it's just you type it in or you copy it in. Okay. And the voices are all synth synthetic, so they, they can just read. Whatever you put in there, they'll, they'll read it back. Yeah, all right, this one is on. This is the Chimatron. It's, uh, you know, electronic wind chimes, and it's playing back uh, a, a, a vowel synthesis algorithm. It's, a, it's the sound of a man singing a vowel, and it's, it's a very short one. Which one? Uh, it evolves over time. I have it, I have it going through, you know, AEIOU. And sometimes uh, Y? And, mm, oh. no, not Y, no. Uh, y is just I anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and, and, and the tone will evolve too, so it, it, it changes its sound. It's a bit hiccupy at the moment. Uh, I think it needs to be restarted, but you get the idea. It's being temperamental. Yeah. Is this a larger version of it? Uh, no, this is, this is the first robot, first and last robot on our tour. Um, this is one of our actual robotic musical instruments what our, you know, lifeblood is. So I'm going to turn it on and, and start it playing. Okay. This is the first in, in what will be a series of Xylobots. And the mechanism actually comes from another installation that we did of a Dadaist piece called Ballet Mechanique. It's a piece for 16 player pianos and human percussion. And uh, it was written in the Dada period by George Antile. It was never performed in its original form until 1999, well after his death, because 16 player pianos synchronized didn't exist back then. But, you know, they've come into existence. And so, you know, then it was performed in the original form in 99. And then in 2005, the National Gallery in DC wanted to do an installation version of it. And you can't really have, uh, you know, human percussion players come in twice a day and perform a piece for two months, you know, unless you have, a, you know, more money than a museum does. Uh, so they hired us to build robots to play all the percussion parts, and that included three xylophones, four bass drums, uh, a gong, siren, doorbells, and uh, three electric fans meant to simulate airplane, airplane propellers that were called for in the original score. Eventually, could, could these be collected and, and uh, kept as ongoing exhibitions in a museum? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, we design them so they need minimal maintenance because you really, you know, you, you don't find people in museums that know how to maintain musical robots, so we build them so they don't break. Mm -hmm. uh, or if they do, it's just, you know, swap a part on or whatever. So yeah, they, they can be put into permanent installation. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Thank okay. you. Okay. Yeah.